If your ferritin level has come back elevated, then you found the right video. The problem with an elevated ferritin level is that doctors get it wrong only about 90% of the time. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about all the different things an elevated ferritin level can mean and the questions you should ask your doctor in order to arrive at the actual diagnosis. Lately, it's become very fashionable for a doctor to tell any patient who's had an elevated ferritin level that they're eating too much red meat, they probably have iron overload, they need to cut back on their red meat consumption. Uh, they may even say, oh, you've got hemochromatosis. All of these things are somewhat ignorant. Uh, as you'll see as I go through this video, that that is true about 10% of the time. The first thing you need to know about ferritin is that it's something called an acute phase reactant, similar to ESR, to CRP, to procalcitonin, to hepcidin. It basically goes up with any inflammation or any infection anywhere in your body. So just having an infected toenail or having some chronic inflammation in a shoulder can be enough to make your ferritin level elevate. Most doctors don't know this. Now, while an elevated ferritin level can be an indication that you may have hereditary hemochromatosis, there are specialized genetic tests for this condition. And only after those tests have come back positive, can you in fact say, yes, I have hereditary hemochromatosis, and then worry about your iron intake. But 90% of the time, that's not what's going on with an elevated ferritin level. Similarly, any autoimmune condition that results in inflammation can cause an elevated ferritin level. So conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, inflammatory bowel diseases, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, any autoimmune condition that's in its active phase can cause an elevated ferritin level. Another very common cause of elevated ferritin is alcohol consumption. Some people will have an elevated ferritin level even if they're just averaging one drink a day. Uh, most people are gonna have elevated ferritin if they're having two or more drinks on a daily basis. And so this would be one or two glasses of wine, one or two glasses of beer, or one or two ounces of hard liquor. Another very common cause of elevated ferritin is any sort of liver disease whatsoever from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, fatty liver, to non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, to cirrhosis, to hepatitis, any autoimmune liver condition. So any inflammation or infection of the liver is going to cause elevated ferritin. Another very common cause for elevated serum ferritin levels is kidney disease. If you have any degree of chronic kidney disease, then you're almost assuredly gonna have an elevated ferritin level. Uh, again, many doctors will immediately say, oh, you're eating too much red meat, you have iron overload, maybe hemochromatosis. How common is chronic kidney disease, either stage one, two, three, or four? It's pretty darn common thanks to all of the type two diabetes in modern society. That's much more likely to be causing elevated ferritin levels than iron overload from too much red meat. Another very, very common cause for elevated ferritin levels is metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, type two diabetes, hypertension, hypertriglyceridemia, any of these conditions that are part of metabolic syndrome can result in quite elevated ferritin levels. Less common would be any of the hemolytic anemias like sickle cell anemia or any of the beta thalassemias. Any of these, if they're actively destroying red blood cells, that's going to give you an elevated ferritin level. A much more dangerous and much less common cause is cancer. Any malignancy anywhere in your body can cause a striking increase in ferritin levels. So I hope that you can figure out from what I've just said that if you come back with an elevated ferritin level, that's not a diagnosis. That's a very non-specific marker that yes, indeed, there is something wrong somewhere, but it in no way gives you a definitive diagnosis. All an elevated serum ferritin should do is spur your doctor on to further investigation. Now, if you currently have fatty liver and type two diabetes and you're drinking a couple of mixed drinks every evening, 
That's exactly why you have an elevated ferritin. It has nothing to do with your red meat intake. It has nothing to do with iron overload or hemochromatosis. You have three risk factors for elevated ferritin. That's why you have it. But out of an abundance of caution, your doctor should thoroughly investigate all of the causes of elevated ferritin that I've talked about in this video. Only then will you arrive at the actual reason, the root cause, as to why you have an elevated ferritin level. One final thing that you absolutely must know about the ferritin test is that different reference labs report it differently. And in many cases, they uh, summarize what the normal range is so much so that it becomes almost unusable. So for example, LabCorp says that this is the normal range for ferritin, regardless of your age, regardless of your sex. This is completely inaccurate and very misleading and here's, here's how you know that. When you look at Quest's reporting for ferritin levels, you can see that there is a huge disparity based on gender, based on age. Uh, so if, if, a, if a young human is 14 days old, it's completely normal for them to have a ferritin level of 717. If someone is 15 years old, then their ferritin should be relatively low. Anything above 83 would be considered abnormal. But as you get older, it becomes normal to have a higher ferritin level. Indeed, you can see for a male over 59 years of age, it's completely normal to have a ferritin level of 350. But if that had been reported on a lab core sheet, it would be recorded as a high level. Also, you can see from this chart that men on average have a significantly higher ferritin level than women even though it can be completely normal. So if you had a 60 year old man who had a ferritin level of 380, it's completely normal. However, if you had a female who was 60 years of age and she had a ferritin level of 380, that would be considered high. So not only do you have to worry about your doctor's depth of knowledge and the depth of their uh, differential diagnosis pool, many doctors, their pool is very, very shallow. They only know one answer to an elevated ferritin, but also you have to realize that your reference lab may be giving you the, the normal range incorrectly. And indeed your elevated ferritin level may be completely and totally normal for your gender and for your age. So I hope this video really helps you to have a conversation with your doctor about your elevated ferritin. Is it truly even elevated? Do you have multiple risk factors that be, could be causing it? Or are you in that very, very rare minority of people who actually uh, have hemochromatosis or iron overload? Uh, if this video helped, please leave a comment down below and don't be shy about sharing this with a friend or family member who had an elevated ferritin level. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.